Hello, I'm Paul Alasowskis, one of the designers at Firelight. We get a lot of phone calls asking us to explain why Firelight is so good and why we've pursued high performance halogen when the market is going to LED and HID. Yes, Firelight is halogen, but not as you know it. Just like you, popular opinion led me to believe that HID and LED was the bee's knees. However, after a little bit of research and development, we found the absolute opposite. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. LEDs and HIDs actually take us away from the critical properties that are ideal for outback driving in Australia. Good for reducing current draw, yes. Really bad for maximising what you see. Firelight simply wanted to produce a light that provides the driver the best vision possible without compromise. Everything was subservient during the design phase to the properties that maximise sight and nothing is as good as a high performance halogen for serious outback driving. Big claim given the market trends I know, but trends aren't science and the science is sound and well documented, but you won't find it in magazines or retail stores. You indeed might be excused for thinking we've lost our minds given the current trends I know, but that is what they are, trends not science or physics, as you'll soon see. So let's get down to it. Why is it high performance halogen is so good if you design it properly? And by properly, I mean make it bright. Brighter than any halogen you have ever seen. Once you've produced a light as bright as firelight, it all comes down to the light properties and how that impacts on what you see and what you think you can see. Halogen has a color rendering index of 100 it's simply as good as it gets in terms of colour rendition. This gives you the ability to see colours for what they are. To use a light source with less than 100 CRI compromises your ability to see some colours. LED and HI systems have low spectral performance by comparison to halogen. Colour is very, very important characteristic in resolving an image when the object and the background are close in shade and colour. The way we see colour is relatively simple. We see the colour that is reflected to our eyes. Objects absorb all of the colours other than the ones you see. Simply put, if you're looking at a red object, all the colours of the spectrum are absorbed and the colour red is reflected and we see red. If you happen to look at a red object under a light that has no red in it, the object indeed would look black. If there is little or none of that wavelength in the light source, it simply can't be reflected to your eye, therefore you don't see it. Light sources with a high CRI, 98 plus, are highly desirable in colour critical applications, such as picking up an animal standing in front of a bush, where the silhouette is broken up by the background and the background is that of a similar colour to the animal. In this scenario we rely heavily on the subtle differences in colour to make out the silhouette, size and shape to trigger an evasive response. To have the colour spectrum compromised in any way actually goes to camouflaging the very object you're trying to detect by making the animal and the background look similar, if not the same in colour. Simple. High CRI is good. Low CRI is bad. And halogen is as good as it gets. It's worth your while having a look at this graph on our website. Secondly, the ability of a light source to penetrate airborne moisture, dust or smoke. We rarely drive in the outback in clear air conditions. Halogen will penetrate airborne particulates far better than a blue-green bias light like our LED or HID. This is due to the Tyndall effect or Tyndall scattering. The longer wavelength of light produced by halogen is vastly superior in its ability to punch through these conditions. And it's not by a trivial amount. The intensity of the scattered light depends on the fourth power of the frequency. So blue light, short wavelength, is scattered much more strongly than red light, long wavelength. It is worth your while googling the Tyndall effect. Simply put, short wavelength light, blue, is bad for penetrating dust and moisture. Long wavelength red-yellow light is good. The Tyndall effect, by the way, is also known as Tyndall scattering. It explains light scattering by particles in a very fine suspension and explains why the sky is blue. It is named after the 19th century physicist John Tyndall. It is similar to Rayleigh scattering. Ever wondered why LEDs don't get the distance? In part, it is because of this effect. 
because the blue light produced by them is exponentially predisposed to diffusion. Lastly, low glare. Halogen has most of its output biased in the longer wavelengths of light by comparison to HID and LEDs, which have a blue bias. Blue light waves are amongst the shortest, highest energy wavelengths in the visible light spectrum. Because they are shorter, these blue or high energy visible wavelengths flicker more easily than longer wavelengths. This kind of flickering creates a glare that reduces visual contrast and affects sharpness and clarity. You may have already noticed this when driving towards someone with HIDs or LEDs. Far from ideal. Short wavelength light is bad for glare. Long wavelength light is good. And by extension, halogen is superior in this characteristic as well. In closing, I'd like to thank you for watching and encourage you to talk to users of Firelight on our Facebook page or contact David and myself direct.